Welcome in. Thanks for joining us for the WHHI Daily News, where we strive to bring you more Low Country news more often. I'm Bob Stevens. Hurricane Idalia moving through the Lowcountry Wednesday night as more of a tropical storm moving so quickly it's expected to be at sea by early Thursday morning. More of a storm surge event closer to the coast with water rising three to five feet above normal and normal is higher than normal because of a full moon causing king tides at about 9 p.m. Wednesday and 9.30 a.m. Thursday. Inland, rainfalls could be closer to six inches. No matter the impact, we are under a state of emergency declared by the governor before the storm hit. The public schools in Beaufort and Jasper counties are operating remotely Thursday on your computers from home, just like during the pandemic, with hopes of operating normally Friday, including athletic events. Beaufort County and the towns in it are all closed up Thursday, as are the convenience centers, the dumps. They should reopen again on Friday. Hopefully the power will be restored to those who lost it before we get to Labor Day weekend. There is some other news. With school in session in much of the country, the Centers for Disease Control believes the nationwide rate of kids in school with exemptions from any kind of vaccine requirement is higher, maybe not as high as you might imagine. The national rate of parents asking for exemptions to the normal measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine requested for students to enroll in school is growing, but is still under 3% nationwide. South Carolina's rate, about 3.5%. That's about a point higher than before the pandemic. That still means over 96% of kids are getting their routine vaccinations. And while there is still skepticism over COVID vaccines, Three out of four adults who did not get a COVID shot still think the MMR shots for kids are important. Idaho, Utah, and Oregon have over 7% of their kids exempt from any vaccines. Mississippi, New York, and West Virginia have virtually all of their kids vaccinated. Buford County's council has unanimously picked a law firm to review and audit the county's business operations. The county council also has authorized $350,000 to pay the firm of Hainsworth, Sinkler, and Boyd to review all purchases by the county since the first of the year, review all services to the county, and audit the county's purchasing system for the last five years. All of this is in response to questions that led to the firing of County Administrator Eric Greenway in July. And it's a rare, sad time for Georgia Bulldog fans these days. The owner and patriarch of the line of Uggas, the Bulldog mascot, has died at the age of 90. Sonny Seiler grew up and lived for a long time in Savannah. His dogs have represented the University of Georgia athletic teams since the mid-50s. From the original to the current UGA 11, Seiler was also lead defense counsel in the Jim Williams murder trials, later made famous in the book and movie Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. For more details on these and other Low Country stories, we invite you to visit the sources listed on your screen. Yes, we did talk sports earlier, and we hope to be talking sports all the way through the weekend. Justin Jarrett has more. Hey, it's time for Last Night in the Loco on WHHI, powered by LocoSports.com. You won't be seeing any sporting events in the Loco for the next couple of days as we hunker down for the hurricane, but we got in one last turn on deck with three Beaufort County schools going fin to fin at the Bluffton Pool where the May River Sharks swept the day, beating rivals Bluffton and Beaufort. The Bobcat boys edged the Eagles, but Beaufort's girls came out on top versus Bluffton. May Rivers' Ryan Mooney and Mia Yemek each won two individual events, as did Bluffton's Sam Deaton and Buford's Amaret Chapman. Buford's Susan Cushman claimed one victory and narrowly lost to Yemek by four one-hundredths of a second in the race of the night in the 100 free. Other individual winners were May Rivers' Addison Gurley, Stella Pelger, Bryce Cooler, and Kristen Kulach, Bluffton's Andrew Gershutes and Kenneth Lagos, and Buford's Claire Jones. In other headlines, Bridges Prep Girls Volleyball swept a region doubleheader from Branchville to improve to 4-0, while HHCA swept Beaufort High, and May Rivers Boys Volleyball team beat Battery Creek in four sets to go to 5-0 on the season. Too soon to say whether the weather will allow us to enjoy another loco Friday night as scheduled, or we might get a whole weekend of high school football. Colleton County has already moved its home game with White and Old to Saturday, tentatively at 2 p.m., but there are a lot of moving parts, as with any hurricane, so the plan is ever-shifting with the storm. 
Stay tuned to the Loco Sports Twitter and Instagram feeds and our live stream shows on the Loco Media YouTube channel so we can help keep each other in the loop. Stay safe out there, y'all. For Loco Sports and WHHI, I'm Justin Jarrett. Until next time, go Loco. When we come back, we're going to hear from town officials before the storm talking about what's going to be important for all of us to know after the storm. Stay with us.